Welcome to Courageous Living. My name is Kiki Ramsey, I'm your host, and on this show we aim to help you get courageous in everything you do. Today we have an amazing topic. It's October, Breast Cancer Awareness, and we're going to really be talking about women and breast cancer. Thousands upon thousands of women are diagnosed with breast cancer every single year. It's an epidemic, but it doesn't have to be that way. And today we're gonna really be talking about some great stories on how we can fight against breast cancer. So don't go anywhere right after this. to Courageous Living. I'm Kiki Ramsey and I'm here with my fabulous guest Nancy Florine. She's a Montgomery County Council member. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me Kiki. So today we're talking about women and breast cancer and you have had your own battle with breast cancer and so really I want us to talk about your story but before we even do that I want you to tell me about you being a County Council member and when did you start that? I was elected to the Montgomery County Council in the year 2002. Wow. I'm ending, uh, nearing the end of my third term. Wow. On the County Council, and it's been a great privilege. Really? Uh, done a lot of work in land use, housing, and transportation in particular. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great great opportunity for public service and right. every so often we get things right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's the way I look at That's it. a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> and so what made you even start to think about running for the council? Well, I'm the kind of person who's not good at sitting back mm. when I see things uh, evolve in a way I'm not too happy with. So right. many, many years ago, I got involved in a local land use dispute. I'm an attorney. Okay. And of course, I picked a fight with a building owner. And I just got more and more enmeshed in uh, the social and political systems of Montgomery County. Wow. And I never started, I never dreamed, I never dreamed, I never thought really? I'd run for office. Wow. Uh, I'm a really kind of a policy wonk. And, uh, you know, just doing what politicians have to do wasn't really my cup of tea. But I, some friends encouraged me to do it, and I thought I'd t take the plunge finally. And here I am. Oh, here you are. So welcome. <laughs> I'm so glad. Yeah. And so you're in a very prominent position. And I think that, you know, with that being said, having dealt with breast cancer, it's, it's still to see that and to, to see that anyone can go through that ordeal um, is strengthening to me as a woman, and I know that it'll be strengthening for our viewer, viewing audience to also see. So let's talk about that. Um, sure. It's October. It's Breast Cancer Awareness. Um, no, we didn't plan this. <laughs> oh, wow. <well. laughs> <laughs> we are dressed exactly like what we, you know, yeah. the pink is um, the, the color of uh, October for Breast Cancer Awareness. Yeah. And so tell me about when you first found out. Why did you even go to even get a mammogram per se? Well, I'm pretty good about getting annual check checkups. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went and had a checkup. Uh, my doctor handed me a slip for a mammogram. I got around to having the mammogram and then I, you know, I'm at the, the uh, place where they do the tests and the fellow says, um, wait a minute. Hmm. They, you know, I'm getting ready to leave and they say, can you hold on? Wow. And this is a bad thing. Wow. So they, they asked me to wait, and they said, this doesn't look good. And I said, you know, all kinds of awful thoughts are running through right, at that moment, out of the blue. And uh, they had me do another test then. And they said, uh, then they said to me, it looks like you might have something there. Wow. You need to call your doctor. Wow. And they called my doctor for me as mm -hmm. well. Luckily, uh, you know, I had pretty good health insurance, and okay. my doctor called me right. uh, as I, well, called me back as I was leaving, and she said, you need to see a breast surgeon. And this was all before you even left the doctor's well, office? Well, it was within the next couple of hours. Wow. And, you know, at this point, I am completely freaking out. As, exactly. Uh, I would be, too. And uh, it turns out, what I have discovered in retrospect is that the beginning of this experience is mm -hmm. the worst. Right, okay. Because you don't know what you don't know. Right. So you assume immediately mm -hmm. 
You're going to lose your hair. Right. You may have to have a breast removed. It's going to be major. Absolutely. And who knows? You could be dead in three months. We absolutely that's what you're always thinking. believe. We <laughs> always think that. You know, we're talking about hair, and you know, that's one of the things that women always, you know, think about is, oh my God, am I going to lose my hair? Well, you're going to lose. I mean, we've all had dear friends and mm -hmm. relatives and folks we know who have been through this and have had very difficult challenging times right absolutely and uh, that's what runs through your mind and the minute you go on the internet <laughs> all you hear are worst case scenarios yes absolutely and, and naturally you know that's what i did you, so you laugh and you started going on the of course, internet because yeah, can, I, can I, anything I, prepare you for that moment that you hear oh there might be something there well all that can prepare you is talking to folks who've been through this okay I think because and hopefully listening to us chat because you get a sense of how it goes right uh, the hardest part for me is it took a, lo a good long time to get in to see a breast surgeon oh so from the time that you got you know got the this word, information I right. got to worry about this for a month a before month. I could get in to see a doctor Wow and which is all kind of weird because you think well, I'd have to see a surgeon since I see a cancer doctor, right? But apparently, the way it all works is you have to go see a surgeon. They offer, uh, they offer up tests. Okay. And that's when you start getting information. Okay. They do uh, a biopsy, so that's you know, in pa patient effort. Uh, they do additional mammogram tests and okay. different different evaluations and MRIs and whatever right. it is the doctor orders. So that's what the surgeon, the breast surgeon. They order up. They order up all these tests. And you get more information as you move along. Okay. And the surgeon directs sort of how that goes. Okay. Then typically, at least in my case, they did a biopsy, okay. which is they did a moderate incision, and they went in and took, mm -hmm. out, a, took out a little piece, and they said, yeah, she's... She is breast cancer. Wow. Which is badness. Right, right. And so you have to wait around to get that information. How long is that process? Well, like for me, you? it was a couple months to get from, I think it was, might have been in March when I came out of the uh, radiologist's office until May. I remember we were doing the budget. Wow. <laughs> it was a really bad day. And I get this call from, from the breast uh, cancer surgeon that, um, uh, yeah, they were going to need to move forward. Wow. So at that point, uh, we scheduled further tests. Mm -hmm. And then a month after that, I went in and had what's known as a lumpectomy. Right. I was going to ask you what did you decide to do because there are mastectomies and there's well, lumpectomy. And, and it turns out you don't know. Again, when they do the lumpectomy, uh, at least in my experience, uh, they went in, they take, they figure out, how large the cancer right. is. In my case, it wasn't self-detection. I, I never could have told you that I had anything going on there. So the only way you knew that you had breast cancer is because you got a mammogram. Yes. Okay. Yes. And for me, it was a, a small uh, bit of cancer. They did a lumpectomy. They took out the whole cancer, mm -hmm. and then they actually checked my lymph nodes. Under the arm. Under the arm. Mm -hmm. And the reason they do that is to see if it's spread. Right. If it is spread, then they're really worrying about its invasiveness. Right, absolutely. And that's when things like chemo come into effect. Mm. And also, uh, it may be uh, after they've taken the, uh, done the basic lumpectomy, mm -hmm. uh, a actually, as you're on the table, mm -hmm. they will get results oh. that give them, uh, there's a certain amount of testing as you're under, Okay. Um, where they evaluate what kind of cancer it is. So, but this is mm. a, was all outpatient. Oh, okay. So you did, were not admitted into the Didn't hospital have to be or admitted, anything like that. In okay. my case, uh, if it had been uh, more invasive, right? Uh, if they had found something in my lymph nodes, right? At that point, uh, I had authorized the doctor to do what she needed to do okay. at that point. Okay. So I could have awakened with a far larger incision. Okay. And with with something ta my, more lymph nodes removed. Right. So how do you know, like when you're going in, you knew that you were going in for a lumpectomy versus a mastectomy? Because yes. for our audience who don't know, mastectomy is more so they're removing the entire breast, That's but a, lump yep, a lumpectomy means they're only removing a part, a small portion of where the cancer is actually at. So you knew it was going to be a lumpectomy well, versus? I did, uh, not entirely. Okay. 
based on the information that we knew at the time, uh, we were per that's how it was going to be. Okay. I'm not sure that they would have made a decision about a mastectomy at that moment. Okay, gotcha. Uh, but you know, I had, I had certainly authorized them to make whatever kinds of incisions right. that they mm -hmm. needed to mm -hmm. to make. At that point, it turns out you still don't know right. okay. how bad okay. it is. So they sent the material that they removed uh, out to a lab, and it took a week or so for the information to come back as to exactly what kind of cancer it was. Okay. And it turns out I had a variety of different little cancers in there. Oh, wow. Some are more invasive, were not invasive. Okay, not invasive. And, uh, which means it wasn't going to spread. Okay. But there was some element of invasive cancer in my breast. Now, I'm not a scientist, mm -hmm. and I <laughs> haven't studied up on this, <laughs> uh, so uh, I can't say what other options there may have been, but in my situation, it was pretty constrained. Okay. There wasn't a lot, it wasn't a great deal. Right. Uh, they were able to remove it without uh, a lot of evidence of cancer around, around it. Around it, oh gosh, that's great. Which is a good thing. Yes. So all the news came back really positive okay. for me. Great. And it, and so I didn't, what I didn't realize when this all began is that until I'd had the, had the lumpectomy, mm -hmm. I really wouldn't know whether or not I was going to have to have chemo oh. Or, oh. or what. Until after you Correct. had it. Okay. Because they didn't know how invasive it was. Wow. There was no evidence in my case of it being invasive. So at that point, you know, they said, you don't need to do that. Uh, we're going to do radiation. Wow. And they do radiation in the area. They give you little tattoos. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> once you've healed yeah. up pretty much. Right. Okay. I have these tattoos. and. I'm not a tattoo person, <laughs> right? But when I go in, went in for the radiation, I said, "Well, can I have a little heart?" Oh, I little know. Flower? And they oh. said, "No, we only do little dots." Oh, <laughs> but that's to, that's to orient the radiation machine. Okay. To make sure they get the right parts of you radiated, gotcha. and not the wrong parts gotcha. of you radiated. Got gotcha. you. Uh, and you want them to be correct right. about that. And how long did you have to go through uh, radiation? Was about, I think it was about six weeks. Okay. I went in every day. Okay. Uh, and. Uh, and it wasn't bad. Okay. I, it was easy. It was close. Luckily for me, and in the Washington area, we're pretty close to uh, places where they can perform this, this right. work. Absolutely. And so I actually s would stop in at the radiation office on my way to work. Oh, and wow. Yeah. So you were still working. Oh, yeah. Life went on as usual. The only real disruption for me was just recovering from the lumpectomy. Okay. Because, you know, it's a big cut here and a big cut there. Right. And it hurt a little bit. Mm -hmm. But after a couple of days, it was okay. Wow. And so it was only after that I got, we got the information for about what they had removed mm -hmm. and what, what that reflected on, on the basis of a further diagnosis and assessment. Were they able to tell me, okay, you c we're going to do radiation. Mm -hmm. It's, it's on, the, on the scale of, they have all these standards for how they measure this stuff. And on the scale of that, I was at the low end okay. of, of concern. Mm, wow. So wow. this is a very good thing. Wow. So I had my uh, six weeks of radiation. I got a little time. I, I cleared my calendar. I didn't go to extra things. In my life as a politician, mm. there are lots of events to go to. Right, absolutely. That, that, that year I took off the 4th of July. I didn't go do parades. Okay, like okay. That, which is very wearing. <laughs> uh, and I can everybody bet. Pretty, pretty much gave me a pass. I can bet. Year. But I did my council work and I did my job. But, you know, then I went home and sort of took it easy. Wow. Hold that thought right there. This is an amazing conversation. I know you out there, our viewer and audience is really enjoying this. But we're going to be back with Nancy in just one bit. And we're going to talk more about women and breast cancer. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Courageous Living. I'm Kiki Ramsey, and I'm here with my guest, Nancy Florine, Montgomery County Council member. And we have had this awesome conversation about women and breast cancer, and Nancy is a survivor. And when we went to break, we were just talking about 
you and your radiation um, because you didn't have to go through chemotherapy. You mm -hmm. actually went through radiation. So I want to pick up there because I don't want um, women to miss this process. And I think what we've been talking about is so amazing because if you don't know, you don't know. And if you're a woman who's, you know, been dealing with breast cancer and you're in the beginning stages, this is an awesome conversation because you're kind of teaching us some of the things we might go through or, or, or could encounter with this process, so. Well, most people have no clue about it, and I certainly didn't. Uh, but I was very lucky. I went, the radiation process itself was not, although annoying, uh, and it wasn't scary at all. Mm -hmm. They put you under machine, they line you up, they zap you, mm -hmm. like bing, bing, Does and then it you're hurt? done. Does it not hurt? Not at all. Okay. And it's really quick. Okay, it wow. Takes 15 minutes all together, you got to get, you know, out of your clothes right. and enter into the right kind of um, uh, environment uh -huh. for the machine to work. But that's that. And and then it's over. And the whole point of the radiation mm -hmm. is basically to get the area around the cancer and to ho hopefully control whatever cancer may have gotten into those cells. And because you, you were saying, um, for you, you were still working. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> you yeah. were still going it, to work. It, it, and it, it, I didn't find it uh, um, uh, uh, limiting my activity. I, I think I was, they say that you get tired. I think I got a little tired, but okay. uh, I'm a busy person anyway, right. so I'm used to being tired. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, me, but too, it, me but, too. <laughs> but it wasn't scary tired. Okay. And in fact, uh, right after um, we finished, I finished the radiation, I finished the radiation on Friday and on Monday we went on vacation to China. Wow. Are you and serious? And I was okay with that. And uh, you did fine yeah, on the trip fine, and yeah. everything. Yeah, I you was know, a little freaked out about whether that would work, but it turned out no right. problem. That's so refreshing to hear, though, because, I mean, when you hear all these statistics, I mean, I even have some here, is that um, 39,000 women die from breast cancer every year, um, and there's like 232,000 new cases of breast cancer. Every year. So you hear these statistics, but you don't hear the good side of it, meaning, well, if there were a good side, you don't hear the positive positive sides of, you know, dealing with breast cancer. It, it, I, the percentage of women who die from it is whatever a number is, it's too high. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the vast majority of us make it through. Right. Uh, uh, from in, and there's follow-up. For me, right. uh, uh, there, for the first couple years, uh, now it's, it's been a little over two years for me. Okay. Uh, they did uh, every couple of months. They do um, tests. Right. I see the doctor. The now I have an oncologist. In fact, I just had a, a checkup with her, and they prescribe follow-up drugs you can take or not okay. take. Okay. And um, it's not bad. Okay. It's really not bad. So. Uh, and so you just had your follow-up, follow and everything was. Everything is a okay. Oh my gosh, that's and, a blessing. And so I'm very lucky. Right. Uh, I don't like to make a big deal about. Mm -hmm. This experience, mm -hmm. except to let people know, it can be not too bad. Absolutely, it Absolutely. you know, it certainly the key is having uh, decent health coverage. Well, and, and, uh, <laughs> we can that talk. Is, we, that that's a, a big challenge. thing right uh, now. And, and I wanted to just mention that Montgomery County has a, a women's cancer control program that makes uh, vouchers available for mammograms and the like really? for low-income women. So how so do we so actually how do a woman have, a, have a program that will help women get mammograms, uh, both for mammograms wow. and uh, dealing with cervical cancer? Uh, we do have programs that support mm -hmm. that. That's that amazing. How would a woman even access those resources if they could not afford to to have their own mammogram? Uh, what, well, what you do is you can call, check, call one of the county health numbers. Okay. Uh, like a county health department? Yes. Okay. Or uh, email uh, any one of us who are elected officials or the county executive. Okay. We can all get that person uh, in the right place. That's a blessing. So that is a reason, and you can do that through the library right. or whatever. So right. that is available for people. No, that's really good because, um, a lot of times when we don't have health care, because there are thousands still without health care, mm -hmm. and I know that we're in this whole big political um, thing right now, which we're not really here to talk about, but there's so much going on with like the health care, but the fact is a lot of people still don't have it, and women are um, 
don't know where to access those resources. So I'm really happy that the county, Montgomery County, has something that can help women um, in terms of those resources and everything. So that's right. Question I have for you is, how did your family deal with this? I mean, as a woman um, dealing with this, having a family, how did they handle um, well, you going through this process? Well, they freaked out. Did they? Because like me, they thought I was going to die. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were going to have to be ladling soup into my mouth oh. and all that. And right. they were very sweet and they were very concerned. Right. Uh, and, you know, again, th there is not much information out there for mm -hmm. families or um, certainly are people who've gotten this first bad news from the radiologist. Right. That uh, how this is going to go. And there are a variety of paths. So they, they don't want to downpedal right. the seriousness of this because right. it could be really right. bad. Because here's the thing. We all say, go get your mammogram. You know, get your mammogram. But nobody prepares you for it. If you get your mammogram and they say, hold on. Don't go anywhere. We see something. Yeah. Nobody prepares you for that point. You expect to go, get the mammogram, walk out. Hopefully there's no cancer. But it doesn't happen like that for everybody because these 232,000 women who get diagnosed with breast cancer every year get that hold up sign. Don't go anywhere because there's something there and it could be cancerous. Well, they say one in eight uh, women. Yes. Uh, will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Right. That's a lot. That's I a know lot. a lot of women who who've been through this one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm a little resistant to asking them exactly what kind of cancer was found, but I can tell from the folks who've had chemo. Right. Uh, right. I certainly know the ones who have had a very serious uh, experience, and right. regrettably, some of them weren't with us anymore. Right. It's horrible. It is hard. And I think from the medical perspective, they want you to know about the worst case, mm -hmm. and then you'd be happy mm -hmm. that it's not that, right. if that's the situation. Right. You know, I, I wish that there were, like, some more resources. I know that women can go on and, and about it and stuff like that but I just think it's it's different when you're dealing with it in person mm -hmm. and this is why I really wanted to talk about the story of it and to me you're very courageous I talk about courage all the time and everything that I do I feel like you're very courageous because you went through this process and you're you're you've come out of it but you're still willing to talk about it because there's some women who you know still out there who have questions about cancer and what is it going to do to me? Am I going to lose my hair? Am I going to die? Is my family going to be okay when all this thing is said and done? Well, you know, it's been, it was interesting for me because I, then I started canvassing my family. Mm, oh, uh, and this okay. is the kind of thing people don't talk too much about. Right. Okay, Cousin John's been sick. Well, well, exactly what was he sick with? Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out I have a fair amount of cancer in my family. Really? I have uh, an aunt to a breast cancer. Wow. I have a cousin who ha had two bouts of breast cancer, really? double mastectomy. Really? Uh, it turns out that my sister-in-law is just going through now what I went through. Wow. And uh, my... Um, daughter-in-law's mother died of can breast cancer. Wow. So this is a lot. I feel surrounded and everyone's experience has been completely different. different. My aunt who had the breast cancer and this was like in the 60s or mm -hmm, 70s, mm -hmm. she died, you know, uh, later of something totally unrelated to that. To breast cancer, wow. And that's not atypical. Right. Uh, the challenge is we don't know the answers, and hopefully they will develop some tests mm -hmm. so they can tell you at the get-go, right. what path you're likely, more likely to be on. Yeah, that would be really, <laughs> that would be really nice, and I'm pretty sure a lot of women would want to have some kind of test like that. So before you got, you know, notified of your breast cancer, had you uh, canvassed your family at all? Did you know of all these cases of cancer in your family? Well, I knew vaguely. Okay. But I didn't have the details. Right. And I, then I followed up because there are other tests that they can be performed to see how likely, like I have a daughter. Right. I'm, now I'm real concerned mm -hmm. that, that she's only 29, but mm. I want to make sure that she Absolutely. has the right test. Absolutely. Because there, obviously there's this... There, uh, it's in the family. Right. It's not to my based on my testing. It's not genetic. Okay. 
Uh, but that requires a very expensive test that your your medical right. um, your insurance has to agree to cover mm. uh, to find out the answer to that. And you got that test. I did. Okay. But that's because I had all this cancer. Around. Right. And uh, for people uh, of uh, Jewish extraction, mm -hmm. there's a whole other class of um, predilections. There are different kinds of uh, cancers. Right. And that they discover and. If you have that kind, it's you know it's it has a worse prognosis than other kinds. Okay. And as I said, you don't know right until they've done these tests and which are relatively invasive. Right. right. But at the beginning, of course, you think it's you know the worst. Right. <laughs> so, so okay, we're we're coming to the end here, which I'm yeah. like ah, this conversation is so amazing. Um, what would you say to women out there? Um, who need to really go get that mammogram, who are scared of, of just fearful of even going to the doctor, what would you say? Uh, it, it's not a good thing to put this sort of thing off. Mm -hmm. it's, if you have insurance, it's covered. And under the new act, I'm not sure how it all works, but I, mm -hmm. I suspect it's, it's wor really worth the cost right. to get this kind of information. Right. Get yourself in a position to make decisions. Right. Yeah. Uh, and certainly, if you you've detected a lump, right, uh, you need to get yourself to a doctor as soon as you can. Okay. So, any final words you want to say to women out there um, about breast cancer awareness um, with us being in October? Any final statements? I'd say talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah. And and regrettably, it's so common now mm. that everyone has a story. Share your stories. Right. Uh, listen to each other, yes. and we can all support each other. Well, Nancy, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm so glad you came and you shared your story with us. I really feel like now women are going to be way more informed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about the whole process I because so. that's what we talked about. So. For you out there, don't go anywhere. I'm going to come right back and I'm going to wrap up this segment for us in just a bit. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Courageous Living. I'm Kiki Ramsey and today's show was amazing. We were talking about breast cancer and being a survivor because the truth is we are survivors. So what I'll say to you is if you're a woman out there go get a mammogram. We want to tell more stories of women who are survivors of breast cancer. Until next time, stay courageous. I'm your host, Kiki Ramsey.